that beautiful energy in, come on into the room. Have a seat. Sit on down and let me talk a hole in your head. Y'all feeling all right? Yeah! That is so good. I see I came to the right place because y'all are giving me so much life and I am loving it. Thank y'all for coming to see me. I appreciate it. I do. Yeah! I really do. Look at you, you're looking good. Y'all was dancing good, you're cheering good. Ooh, it got me feeling good, that is for sure. <laughs> All right, let's get into this thing. Listen, y'all, I am loving my mug today. This, it says one of my favorite sayings that actually inspired me a whole lot. You better wake up and pay attention. You see it? And that's just the Mary Clarence right there from Sister Act, which is one of my favorite movies. Check it out right here. You see that? Charmaine from Bakersfield, California, picked this out for me. She sent it to me, and she sent me a little video, so y'all check it out. Hey, Jennifer, it's Charmaine, and I got you this mug. Um, I know Sister Act 2 is your favorite movie, and um, it reminded me of you because you wanted to be somebody, you wanted to go somewhere, so you woke up and you paid attention, and it has Sister Mary Clarence on the mug, and um, another EGOT to another EGOT. Congratulations on everything, and I hope to see you so soon. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> Shemaine, listen, listen, y'all. This sister act inspired me, and this is one of my favorite parts. I gotta do it. If you wanna be somebody, if you wanna go somewhere, you gotta wake up and pay attention. That's for you, Shemaine! <laughs> because I love it so much. And you know, I, I, that's who I was for Halloween. and get to sing that song, so I thought I'd give y'all a piece of it, but it's definitely one of my favorites. I love it. <laughs> Listen, I love it, and I love all the thoughtfulness when you guys send the mugs. You guys are so thoughtful, and y'all are so detailed. Y'all play good attention and all that good stuff. That's how I love to give a gift. When it's specific and it's sentimental, that's when it means the most. So again, thank you guys for all the beautiful mugs, the cards, the words of encouragement. It makes my day. Make sure you go to our website or hit us up on our socials if you want your mug featured and go ahead and send me a picture because I love a picture too and a video because I would love to hear from you. All right? Yes, yes. Now speaking of videos, can I show y'all this super cute video I found? Okay, let's just roll the clip. She's got the strongest knees in the whole class. <laughs> Y'all, I'm so excited to bring out my first guest. She's one of Time Magazine's most influential people in the world. She's an actress and author. Please welcome Priyanka Chopra Jonas! Do you like my couch? What I do you love think? your of? couch. Yeah. I think it's comfortable enough. It's not too, like, deep. You know, you can have a serious conversation. You can get comfortable. This is cool. Good. And now, you know I made it comfortable for you because you were one of the first guests I wanted on my show. Oh, was I? Thank you. Yes. I love you. I'm such a fan. What are you talking about, Miss? <laughs> Youngest EGOT ever. Uh, like, I am the biggest fan. Thank you. So excited. Congratulations on season two as well. Thank you. You're just winning. Thank you. It's a <laughs> blessing. And I'm happy to have you here Thank you. on the couch as well. Thank you for having me. Now, Mother's Day is coming up soon. Mm -hmm. And this is your second, your second Mother's Day? Yes. It'll yeah. be my second Mother's Day. Are you excited about it? Yeah. Um, last year was a little, um, it was a little bit emotional. It was a little different. Um, our daughter was, had just come back from, um, come out of the NICU. Mm -hmm. She spent about, 110 days um, in the neonatal um, ward. And, you know, it was just a really scary time mm -hmm. when um, she was just so little. So that Mother's Day was very emotional, but this time she's like Speedy Gonzalez, like <laughs> crawling everywhere, Yay. bumping her head everywhere. <laughs> like, it, she's just, it's amazing. So it's very joyous and um, it'll be really happy. It's a happy time for me. So happy to hear that. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Has she said her first word yet? Yes, and I worked very hard on her first word. Yeah. It is mama. <laughs> 
But um, Miss Rachel has this song, Can You Say Mama, Mama? And I did that to her, for, like, <laughs> since she was in my arms. I just like, Mama, 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 that's Mama, that's Mama, everything's Mama, Mama, Mama. <laughs> and um, yeah, it happened. It paid off, It huh? paid off. <laughs> oh, maybe one day she'll sing that. Yeah, oh yeah, I There's hope so. nothing like hearing the babies laugh and them singing to you. So I'm sure she does, she tries to sing. sing. Um, I think she's, she's, it, she's very musical. Um, and she like she has she does this thing with her hands. I don't know it's the Italian in her, but she goes. Hey. <laughs> she tries to hit whistle tones. I was oh. like, way to start like, <laughs> like from the, the the hardest thing you can ever do. Hey. <laughs> and I'm like, what is that sound? <laughs> the highest note ever. I love that. <laughs> and, and you and your mom are really close. Yes. yes. Oh my God, do y'all spend a lot of time together? Yes, my mom um, and I. <laughs> Um, yeah, we spent a lot of time together. She's been with me a lot um, when, especially after the baby, but even before. Um, whenever I traveled with my work, she would always come with me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's always nice to have mom around. And you introduced your mom to some of her celebrity crushes. Like, who is some of her celebrity crushes? Hilarious. Um, my mom was most excited about this when I became an actor. One of my first movies in Indian movies, Hindi movies, um, was played by this actor called Kabir Bedi. And my mom is a big fan of him <laughs> and very famous Indian actor. And she met him and was like fully freaking out. And I was like, mom, he's a co-actor of mine. You know, we have to be professional now. <laughs> then I was at a Bruce Springsteen. I was doing music for a hot second. It lasted four singles, don't worry. Um, and I Ooh. met Bruce Springsteen and my mom made sure that I did not wash my hands after dinner until I shook her hand. Oh my God. She was like, you have to shake my hand till you can't do that. And then David Hasselhoff <laughs> was hilarious. My mom still wears that T-shirt at night. It says Hassel the Hoff. He very sweetly brought she it to her. She still wears it. <laughs> she still wears it. And 50 Cent was performing Ooh, in. She like 50. In, she loves 50. <laughs> and she, she was, I don't even have a picture of it, but I should have, but he was performing in Mumbai and she was like, we have to go for that show. You have to take me, you have to take me. I love this show. And I was like, I got you, girl. I'll get you front row, mom. <laughs> and we were in between, and this was in India, we were between the audience and the stage. So 50 was right in front of us. And at some point, like, you know, shirt starts coming off and like clothes start coming off. And he takes off this sweaty skull cap and he throws it in my direction. And my mom goes, oh. <laughs> She caught it. She caught it, kept it. It's still in her closet. <laughs> I love mom. <laughs> Your mom is amazing. <laughs> I mean, she loves her life and she has this incredible zest for life, That's enjoys beautiful. every single moment. And you know, it's very infectious actually that someone is willing to like grab life. <laughs> <laughs> the way they wanted to. <laughs> oh, okay. It's very inspiring. I love that. Will you stick around for a little bit? Yeah, I'll hang on. Enjoy the couch. I love the couch. We'll be right back. We're back for Priyanka. Listen, so you've been married four years. Congratulations. Crazy. Y'all are we so We were recently together. referred to as a long-time couple. A long-time couple? Yeah, I was like, wow, we're a long-time couple now. <laughs> That's so weird. Where did time go? It just got married. <laughs> How does that happen? Long time couple. <laughs> A long time couple. Let's see, um, Nick Jonas saw you when he was younger, huh? Yes. Tell us about that. That's a crazy story. When my mother-in-law told me that story and I was like, mm, I don't know. I, when I was 17, actually when I was 18, I just turned 18, I won the Miss World pageant. Mm -hmm. This was in London and um, I was, I had just, this was November, I turned 18 in July. Complete child, I had no idea what I was doing or what this world entailed. Um, didn't have a lot of practice. But apparently, my mother-in-law was like, I remember watching you when you won. And I was like, I was in London, this is 2000. They were, I think, in, um, New they were in Texas. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, there's no way. And she was like, I remember it so clearly because it was November, Nick was on some Broadway show at seven years old. His brother was on some Broadway show at eight or nine. And she said, I remember this clearly because Kevin Sr., my father-in-law, loves watching pageants. And he, I remember, was watching it. And Nick came and sat down and watched you win, which is unfathomable. Like, that was 22 years ago or something. He was seven, I was 17. And he was sitting there. 
and he was watching. Isn't that, it, it's just, it was so weird. And I was like, I don't know. It sounded like a destiny. Like, it was Maybe. Weird to me. Is that not how you perceive it? I do, but yeah, I, I feel like it was some sort of, you know, I do believe that people are meant to be for, with each other for whatever that duration in your life is supposed to be. And I think that people collide because you're supposed to create on this small, short life that you have, memories that you will take forward, family. And, and I think that Nick and I had through our lives, like these weird, enchanted little moments. And, um, but it's lovely now to have found your person. He's, yeah. He's and you guys are such a beautiful couple. One of my favorite celebrity couples, that is. I will have to say that. Now let's talk about your new show, Citadel. Yes, ma'am. Tell everyone what it's about. Um, Citadel is out there on Amazon Prime right now. Please go and watch it. Um, it's an amazingly ambitious show. It's with Richard Madden, Stanley Tucci, Ashley Cummings. It's a great cast. Um, it's a spy, spy show. It's original um, IP, which means like the story is completely new. Um, it's basically a Citadel. Citadel is an intelligence agency like the CIA, but for the whole world. It's mm -hmm. loyalty is not to any nation because there's so much war that has happened that governments decide that they should share intelligence. And we are top spies of that agency. And um, our memories get erased because Citadel is compromised. And basically, Richard's character and my character have history. And it's heavy history. Mm -hmm. And then our memories are erased and then we come together and <laughs> hits the fan. <laughs> And we have to save the world while saving each other. And I love it. It is, it's, it's great. And it has the most, it's the Russo brothers that helmed it. And it has the most amazing action. And Amazon has really put, um, it's very ambitious because it has, it's a truly global show. It has a leg in um, Italy. Mm. It has another show in India. And all the stories are cross-pollinated, so if you watch this show, um, you can watch the other shows as well and, you know, have like the origin story for my character or the origin story for other characters oh, that you will see in. So it's such a global, um, I guess, experiment. Mm -hmm. um, it makes it so fun. It's never happened in television yeah. before. I was thinking. Yeah. And then you do like some fight scenes up in there, huh? A That's year and a tough. half of fights. A year and a half of fights? Girl, I can't even. What is that? What? I know. It was a lot of stunts. Like, <laughs> did, did you ever get hurt doing any of the stunts? Yes, I, I did. I have a scar here. I don't know if you, can you see it? That's a scar from, from your fight scene? Yeah. Oh, you tough. So, oh no. I, I, I don't usually hide it because I'm like, I have a little street cred. But in this scene, right? You earned it. I know. I was like, in this scene, I was fighting five guys. And I'm getting really beaten up. Oh, and... guys! Mm -hmm. I'm a really tough spy. I speak seven languages in the show. Girl, Mandarin got... included. That's yes. a hard language. You know what? We can show them better than we can tell them. Can y'all roll the clip? <laughs> Seat's taken. I'm waiting for a friend. Well, how about I keep you company till they show? The thing is, he's far more attractive. And I'm a girl who paid a fortune for a good view. Is that right? I mean, I'm surprised you show your face at all. You got a mask I can borrow? I got dozens left. How about I call the rail line, give you a refund? Will they cover emotional damage? I think this is the quiet car. Mm. I'm sure I'm going to bring him back. You like Mama Mason? Grace, I'll show you how the end line. I'm going to also be exact. What's more, do here. We're a team. We're a team. We're a team. We're a team. No comprende español. Y'all see that? Oh my God, we'll be right back with Priyanka. Hi, this is Celine Dion. Sure, and I'm Mariah Carey. Don't give up on this call. Love comes to those who believe it. And this is really me. Oh yes, it is. <clears throat> oh my gosh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> We're back with Priyanka. Oh my, girl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about your new movie, Love Again. Tell everyone what it's about. It's such a cute movie. It is um, Sam Hewen, me, and Celine Dion. Celine. Yeah, Celine is actually playing herself in the movie. 
and she's so funny, and it's her acting debut. Oh my goodness! Would you, I would have thought that Celine probably did movies, but she's never done movies, and she probably should because she's amazing <laughs> in it. Um, but it was—it's an amazing rom-com. I love romantic comedies, and we have original music from her as well. And she Ooh. helps my character basically loses her fiance, and you know, starts sending texts to his old number, and it goes to this guy, Sam's character. And it's kind of poignant and sad, and they find love because Celine helps them find love, find love again. It comes out on Mother's Day, you guys. It's really cute. You must go watch it. Oh, I'm definitely yeah. gonna watch it. That's my type of movie right there. And Nick is in the movie too. Oh, yes. Y'all have a funny scene together. Nick is. How in was the that? Movie. Um, I was actually really grateful. I was. This was during COVID. We shot it 2020. And I had to move to London to film it. So Nick was like, you know, I'm gonna come with you. I'll make sure you're all settled. Yeah, I have a good, good man. Um, he's like, I'm, I'll make sure you're all settled and everything. So he happened to be there while I was filming the movie. So this, this actually, this scene was written for just any actor. Mm -hmm. And um, the directors, come, the producers came up to me and they were like, do you think we could ask Nick to do it? And I was like, yes, yes, please. Because literally in the scene, it says, this guy like slobberly, slowly kisses me. And I, I can't do slobbery kisses. <laughs> I don't blame you. Like, that's all too much. It's too graphic, like saliva. But the scene was that. So I was just so happy it was like familiar <laughs> saliva. You caught the right one, that's for sure. I was like, thank God. Can you imagine doing that with a random? No. Ah! So yeah, I lucked out. I was like, yes, yes, Nick will do it. See, but the thing is, everybody <laughs> don't have a Nick, though, girl. <laughs> what are we supposed to do? <laughs> oh my God. Now, your character in the movie loves Would You Rather questions. Yes. So she does. should we do a few? Oh boy. Oh, we must. It'll be fun. Okay. Would you rather have a sing-off with Celine Dion or a dance-off with Janet Jackson? That's a good one, y'all. Ooh, it's right. I mean, I'm gonna lose both of them, so that, <laughs> that's great. I'd probably know the lyrics of Celine's songs a lot more than I would know the dance steps for Janet Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I, I would pick Celine. Celine. Because I think I, I'd know the lyrics. Okay, would you rather be able to speak any language or be able to communicate with animals? Oh, that's I hard. know my answer. I'd like to communicate with animals. Me too. Yeah. I mean, it's fine. People, anyway, people are confusing anyway, whether you know the language or not. <laughs> Animals are not confusing. I think so, at least. They keep it simple no, in I nature. Think you're, I think you're right. Yeah. I'm gonna go with that too. Would you rather ask your ex or a total stranger for a favor? These are good. A stranger. I don't, I don't read my books backwards. <laughs> she said what she said. I like how you said that. You don't read your books backwards. Mm -hmm. I like to go to the next chapter, not to the previous one, because I know the story, you know? That was well said. Okay, would you rather have to work under a hot sun or in the extreme cold? Hot I sun. know. Give me five. <laughs> hot sun, really quickly. I Give literally live in Mumbai. It's hot, hot, it hot? hot, humid hot sun. I love it. I love the heat. I love the heat. Our melanin was made for the heat. Yes. That's why. I'm coming to Sun visit. any day. Sun all day. I don't want to be cold. What if you had the shoot in it? Like, I have. It sucks. Like, it's terrible. You can't. I, I remember I was doing, I was filming in New York um, for a TV show I did called Quantico, and it was so cold. <laughs> mm. Thank you guys. It was so cold. This is how I said my lines. And I'm an FBI agent. I'm really tough. So I'm like, hey. <laughs> Your face gets <laughs> <came> from. <laughs> <laughs> it, I had to dub, like, ADR the whole scene. <laughs> <laughs> Would not move. I just said. But they still shot me. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, it's trouble when you're trying to act like you're it not. It does not Go. move. That's the worst. Mm. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Love Again is in theaters. <laughs> and Citadel is available now on Prime Video. We'll be right back. Our next guest is one of 30 women to compete for Zach's Hard on the past season of The Bachelor. Take a look. I don't have words. Because it doesn't make sense. That makes no sense to me. 
sometimes that's just the way life goes and it sucks, but it just means I'm one step closer to finding who I need to be with. <sighs> My biggest fear is someone saying, like, I can't give you the love you deserve. Like, I don't know what that means. Mm. Well, even though that didn't work out, she is giving it all another shot. Give it up for America's new bachelorette, Cherry Lawson! Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. I'm so excited. <laughs> We're so happy to hear you. Can, can you spill the energy in the crowd? Oh, this is a good crowd. Okay, so what is it like finding out that you're the new Bachelorette on national television? Oh my goodness, when I was told, I honestly had to double check. I asked, <laughs> are you sure that that was my name that was called? Because I didn't believe it. I literally could not believe it. I was having all these emotions. Mm. I was excited, I was nervous. I mean, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. So it to hear is. my name called, I knew that it was gonna be something incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you feel it. Oh, my God. And what is it like taking on a platform as a bachelorette, mm. as a black woman? It's huge. It, it's huge. Um, this puts me in the position of being the fourth um, mm. woman of color to hold this role and, you know, the second monoracial African-American um, woman to have the opportunity to find love. And I notice and I acknowledge that this is so much bigger than myself, mm -hmm. although it is my journey to love. Like, it's bigger than me. And... I just want to be able, and I'm honored to hold that representation for other people at home that look like me, women of color, mm -hmm. little girls that can look up to me and, and acknowledge that this is something that's possible for them too. You are a great representation, yeah. <laughs> that is for sure. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay, your parents, they've been married for 47 years. That's amazing, first of all. Yes. Wow, how did they meet? Uh, they have the craziest love story, but the most beautiful. So they were actually next door neighbors as children growing up. And they didn't start dating until high school. So high school sweethearts. And upon graduating and my dad going to college, he joined the army. Um, they got married and they have been married ever since. So that is insane. beautiful. Yeah, it is. It's insane. insane. Are they skeptical about you doing this? Yeah, I mean, I don't. I think what parent would not <laughs> not be. I mean, not the first time I went on this show, they were definitely um, skeptical. But I think my parents have instilled such good values in me and, and morals. So they're also trusting and knowing that I can make good decisions and, and will make the right decision. Mm. Um, but I mean, yeah, it comes with its highs and lows, the challenges of any parent watching their child be vulnerable on national TV again. Um, but they're excited. So. I'm sure they're proud too. Mm -hmm. That's, That's for sure. Proud. That's for sure. <laughs> Now, America was heartbroken when you went home. Mm -hmm. Did you see it coming? Hey, yeah, no, did I didn't. Go? <laughs> I did not. I will say I was a little blindsided um, because me and Zach always had what I felt um, a very honest and open relationship. No matter if it was a challenging conversation to have, we both gave each other that space to do so. Mm -hmm. um, but I will acknowledge that at that point in, in the process, it's almost hard not to be blindsided because it's he's making difficult decisions. And so um, I didn't see it coming, but I mean, he had to make an uncomfortable, but a decision that was best for him, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you feel like you got closure at all? Yeah, that I do. Um, we did have an opportunity to kind of talk about that, and I asked him kind of what was that process like for him to make that decision? Like, how did he navigate? How did he go about it? What was, I guess, for me, I asked him what was the turning point, right. you know? Um, where, where did it go wrong? And he basically just reiterated to me that it wasn't anything that went wrong. It's something that he honestly struggled. He was mm -hmm. going back and forth with all day before that rose ceremony. And he just had to make a, a decision, which for me, I was like, I don't know if that makes me feel better, but at least you're acknowledging, you know, that that's you what you were it. going through. Right. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah. Okay, so you've had, like, uh, the, the last year has been massive. Let me see. You graduated, mm -hmm. then you were on The Bachelor, and now you're The Bachelorette. Yeah. Like, how are you processing all of this? I still am. I really am. Um, this time last year, I was literally just, like you said, just graduating, and yeah. then working, then getting the, the opportunity to go on Zach's season and be on The Bachelor, and then now I'm in my own journey of my own. So I feel like things just keep getting better. So uh, it's it's a lot, but it's all exciting, and I'm just glad and grateful for, for all of these good things. Wow, that is amazing. More with the new Bachelorette, Charity, after this.
Yes, it's getting good. We're back with the beautiful Charity Lawson, the new Bachelorette. Yes. Now, I want to know, are you ready for love? Oh, I'm so ready. I think I'm even yeah. re more ready. Is that a word or a <laughs> phrase? Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> yes, very excited. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to open your heart and... Yep. And don't let it all flow out. Let it all <laughs> flow out. I love that. Yeah. And you're a therapist, huh? I am. I'm a child and family therapist. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Wait, so do you feel like you have an advantage? Like you can get more inside of their minds or anything? Yeah, I think um, a few of the core skills that I have as a therapist is just that I'm a really active listener mm -hmm. and I'm really compassionate. So I think for me, I'm very expressive, I wear my heart on my sleeve, I don't mind feeling my emotions. So I think for me, that will be an advantage in the sense that I hope that cultivates a space for, for the guys um, yeah. to also kind of reciprocate that back to me, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you looking for in a man? Ooh, I have a whole checklist, but we're not gonna run that down. Oh. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But you know, there's a few traits that I definitely know that I, I need after, you know, kind of going through past relationships, um, somebody who's confident. I, I want someone who's sure of what they want. It, it, we're not playing games. Mm. Um, someone who is funny, a sense of humor is really important. And someone who's authentic. I just want someone who is themselves. Um, don't, they don't feel a need to put on a facade. I, I want the true, the real you. Mm. Um, and yeah, those are the few, top three at, at least, top three. All right, we all taking notes, yes. that's for sure. <laughs> uh, do you have, what's your type? Like who is your celebrity crush? Oh God. <laughs> My celebrity crush. Know. I don't know if I should say it, but <laughs> <laughs> we want to know. It's Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> oh, now, now I have to ask. I'm sure you observe him oh sometimes. Do you think he has those traits that you're looking for? I do. I mean, what do you see in him? I don't know him, um, obviously, but he's a great smile. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Uh -huh. Um, has a little bit of swag. I mean, that's, okay. yeah. That's always that's a plus. Not the characteristics. I, I list it off, but you won't really know those until you get to know a person. But from what I can see and things that I've read, I think he does embody all of that, so. <laughs> that's a tip. Yeah. So we got a good sense of that right there. Yeah. Whoa, since, you know, you're here, if I would love to do, like, a deal breaking. Oh. This will be fun. Game oh. with you. Can we, you want to play with me? Absolutely. All right. We're ready. All right. He has a great personality, but he's not a great kisser. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Um, now put Michael B. Jordan face right there. I know. <laughs> hey, bring that back. <laughs> um, I will say it's not a deal breaker because I can compromise and we'll teach him. We'll meet. We'll meet. <laughs> I love. I, you're quick. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. That was a good answer. He's very confident, but he freaks out when he sees a spider. <laughs> I know I would. Um, yeah, so that's actually my biggest fear is spiders. I don't, I don't play those. I don't play with that. Um, <laughs> so it's not a deal breaker because I guess we'll both be screaming. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I don't who, know. Who, who get the I don't know. It'll, it'll run away. <laughs> y'all just be running away. We'll together. just both be screaming. Yeah. I will be running right with y'all because I don't like them either. Okay. Uh -uh. He has a really, he has really attractive friends that are girls. Mm. Mm. Hmm. Oh, I know. I think oh, we, we all say. I know we all are like, uh, uh. Um, what you, you got know, to say, Miss Therapist? Let, yeah, let, here we are, and it's about to be a therapist answer. But I'm. This is me. I, as long as there are boundaries that are set, I think that's very important in okay. any relationship. I love that you have clear, clear boundaries. Yes. Um, because I mean, there's beautiful people, beautiful people everywhere, and I don't want that to ever be like a, a threat. As long as there's trust established, I mean, that's not a deal breaker for me. I like that. He tells a white lie on the first date. Absolutely not. No. No, not at all. In the limo, bags packed, out of here. Like, ah, uh -uh. Out of here. We're not, no, what, no. That's just, we're, we're already laying bad soil. We don't have time. We need a firm foundation. <laughs> not happening. You hear that? She's tough. <laughs> Y'all better get ready. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Charity. You. You're beautiful. Congratulations on everything. Come back and see us. Of course. Okay. Please have me anytime. I will. Yes. Season the Bachelorette premieres Monday, June 26th at 9 on ABC. We'll be right back.
Our next guest is a former professional athlete who has inspired millions of people to change their lives and achieve their goals. His newest book is called The Greatness Mindset, Unlock the Power of Your Mind and Live Your Best Life Today. Please welcome Lewis Howes. So good to see you, good to meet you. Nice to meet you, thank you so much for coming in and then bringing all that amazing you know, energy. You know, it's a great day to be alive. It is. It's a great day to be alive. And it's a blessing to have you. Oh thank my you. God, so you have a very impressive story. Thank you. You went from sleeping on your sister's couch to becoming like like a, a millionaire with your business. And you come, can you? How did that all happen? <laughs> um, well, I had big dreams. I had big goals, but I also had a lot of fears and insecurities. Mm. And I knew that I couldn't do it on my own. So I started to reach out to mentors, coaches, and advisors really early on on my sister's couch to give me guidance because I just didn't think I could do it on my own. So those coaches really guided me, gave me a game plan and told me things to overcome in order to help me grow my business. So that's how it started. That is amazing. I, I, I just love everything about this. <laughs> this is my type of stuff. I love okay, it. Okay, so you, you have a podcast, The School of Greatness. It started 10 years ago? 10 years ago, yeah. Well, okay, and, and what, do you have a favorite interview? I do. Um, I mean, I've done 1,400 episodes. 1,400 episodes. In 10 years, but Kobe Bryant was probably my, my favorite, most inspiring. <laughs> and Kobe... Yeah. Wow. And Kobe, because he really opened up in a way that was talking about love, family, legacy, mindset, and really about leaving a legacy and telling beautiful stories. That's what Kobe liked to talk about, telling stories. So for me, it was just a beautiful interaction, and he really opened up his heart in a big way. That's beautiful. Okay, tell us the difference between success and greatness. This is what I want to hear. Well, I think you, I mean... A lot of high achievers start off wanting to be successful, and you are extremely successful in your career. Thank you. Right? You've accomplished so much at every high level. And a lot of people start off wanting to be successful, but success, in my mind, is a little bit selfish. It's not bad, but it's about me. It's about what I want, what I can create, what I can gain for me. Mm. But the great leaders, I believe, turn their success into greatness through service. And that's something you've done, Jennifer. You've really used your talents. Thank you. You've used your talents, you. your gifts, not only to accomplish all great things, which you've done, mm. but also to inspire, to entertain, to lift others up, and to empower people to overcome their challenges and be great as well. That's what Kobe talked about, and that's what you do as well. Thank you for that. Yeah. You're inspiring me right now. Congratulations on a new book. I love this, The Greatness Mindset. It's the New York Times bestseller. Give that a yeah. hand. What makes you want to write it? 10 years ago, when I was feeling stuck, I was actually in LA traffic 10 years ago, stuck in breakdowns in my life, mm -hmm. relationship breakdown, business breakdown. But it looked like I was accomplishing a lot on, on the outside. But internally, I was in breakdown. And I really wanted to figure out the solutions to how to overcome all these struggles internally mm -hmm. as I was accomplishing success externally. Mm. So I wrote this for my younger self, for the part of me that was struggling, that was trying to figure out life that was broken down inside, although externally things looked good. And I wanted to go on this journey. That's what this 10 year journey has been. It's figuring out how to overcome the challenges inside of myself yeah. so I can have more peace and harmony and, and really be of service in a greater way. So I wrote this book for people feeling stuck, feeling insecure, doubting themselves, showing them the research and science on how to overcome that self-doubt. I'm, I'm taking this all in. <laughs> and you, oh, I love it. There's another one, fear. You say mm -hmm. fear holds us back. Like, how do you overcome yeah. that? Have you ever had a big fear that held you back in any way? Oh, yes. Yeah? One of my coaches and mentors gave me a challenge. He said, I want you to write a fear list. Make a list of all your biggest fears. And one of them was public speaking. Another one was salsa dancing. All these other things that I was afraid to do, right? Uh -huh. And he said, in order to become fearless, you've got to create this fear list and start going all in on this fear until they disappear. And eventually, I made those things that made me feel powerless a superpower. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I like this too. Can you tell everyone what your voicemail says? Oh yeah, my voicemail says, before you tell me what you want from me, tell me what you're grateful for today. Mm. And so every time someone calls me, I love that. It's amazing. <laughs> every time someone calls me, um, I usually don't pick up. If you call me, I'll pick up. Okay. But, but every time they don't call me, they, they call me, I don't pick up. 
I get a voicemail that says, man, it's really nice. What I'm grateful for is my family. What I'm grateful for is my health. Or what I'm grateful for is waking up another day to day. Yeah. And I think it brings people back into perspective of, of gratitude. And gratitude brings us more peace mm -hmm. and it opens the door to abundance. So gratitude is something I practice all the time. And I, it's important to evoke it out of our friends and family as often as possible. That is amazing. Thank you so much for all of this greatness that you just gave us. Of course. Will you come back and see us? Let's do it. All I'm right, in. I'm, I'm going to hold you to it. His book, The Greatness Mindset, Unlock the Power of Your Mind and Live Your Best Life Today. I love it. It's available where books are sold. And today, everyone in the audience is going home with a copy. Yes, you are. We'll be right back! If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.